Let me start off this vlog with this quick comment. Pretty good comment. For any type of web development project, I'd much rather hire somebody who does not know, even in principle, how to sort an array over somebody who has never heard of uh, DDD, which is uh, Domain Driven Development. Also, it is often trivial to rewrite specific algorithms later, even after a project has been shipped. It is almost impossible, at least not without an enormous cost, to change an ORM or decide to switch using client-side rendering afterwards. That is such a profound and important point that this guy nailed that I should have nailed. That is exactly it. I've talked about that in terms of libraries, how I mean, uh, detailed algorithms, algorithms or advanced math. People go, you got to learn math to do programming, which is just bunk. That's, that's just an illusion. With the exception, if you're getting into research, like an AI research or ML research or something, you may have to do that. But for active commercial software development, being able to write complex algorithms is not a requirement. And it's actually, as I said, especially in the web space and business development, which is the vast majority of development, by the way, you're not going to need to be able to write algorithms for projects. It's much more about being able to create and put together a good structure, make good choices in terms of what frameworks you're going to use, using best coding practices. As he pointed out, you could have a crappy algo, a crappy library in there that's not processing, processing data in an optimal way. You can pluck that out and put something else right in pretty easily. But if you have to change the architecture because you had a lousy architect on the system, or a, or a bad programmer didn't know how to put things together properly, then you're in trouble. I've actually seen that firsthand. I've seen that firsthand. Somebody I know was the lead developer uh, on a huge project, multi-million dollar project, and this person had no business being the lead developer. He was a good programmer. That was the same guy I told you he could build a good steering wheel in a car, but if you ask him to design the car, he's gonna put the steering wheel in the back seat. Anyway, so he was put into the position as lead developer because he's a very good programmer, but his architectural, his ability to architect and put everything together well was a disaster. The system was terrible. And they had to, they had to rebuild from scratch after spending like a million dollars in development. It was so badly designed. So, yeah, he's right, this guy. When it comes to the web space and most business development, you much rather have somebody who understands um, domain-driven development, best practices, and all these things that I talk about and teach about all the time, rather than somebody who can write a really refined algorithm. Because you can hire a guy to do that, you know, this, you know, going up works, okay, I need this type of algorithm that does this, you know, and they spend their three hours or hour or 20 minutes, whatever it is. You write that, you grab it, boom, you put it in there, you're done, Bob's your uncle. Yeah. So that's a, that's a very good point with regards to being a good algorithm writer versus a good developer. Um, yeah, I think the good developer is going to make much more money in the end and have many more job opportunities because the need for re really refined code in that way and down to the algorithm is it's not it's not that needed anymore because. Sooner or later, these things are encapsulated into libraries, and that's it. You don't need to do it anymore. You just grab the library, pluck it in, and away you go. Or as I like to say, and Bob's your uncle. 